your holy name. You alone are worthy of all praises. Daddy, accept our praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Eternal King of glory, you are the one that has gathered us here. Our gathering is unto you. We have not come to meet with any man. And no man comes before you and goes away empty-handed. Even as we have come this morning, Father, please. Do the needful in the life of each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Daddy, your word will bring that to pass. Cause your word to comfort expressly. Your word heals. Your word delivers. Your word sets free from captivity. Let it spring forth speedily in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God shall say a better. Amen. Turn to somebody, welcome somebody warmly into the house of the Almighty. Give somebody a warm, a warm welcome. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for his faithfulness. Our God is a faithful God. Amen. God loves Nigeria. How many of us know that? He loves our nation. It does not matter what the plans of the enemies are. The enemy's plans will ever fail concerning this nation in Jesus' name. But then we need to keep praying for Nigeria. Remember our dad in the Lord said something. He said before the election, we need to pray for mercy over Nigeria. We need to pray for more mercy during the election. And that after the election, we need to pray for much more mercy. Praise the Lord. So it is not ended yet. Hallelujah. It is not ended yet. We need to keep praying that the Lord will please continue to have mercy upon Nigeria. And the mercies of God will avail for us as a nation in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Can we turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 14? Matthew chapter 14, we'll look at verse, we'll read very quickly through from verse 22 to 33, Matthew chapter 22, sorry, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. I'll read through very quickly 
Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. I'll read right down to 33. It says, and straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves from the wind, from the wind that was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. That is a word for somebody this morning. God is saying to you, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Verse 28 says, And Peter answered, him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to, go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Wherefore, this thou doubt. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Every contrary wind that is blowing in your situation, in your direction, the Lord is going to cause them to cease this morning. I can hear one particular person's amen. amen. It shall be so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 33 says, Then... They that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. By reason of what God is going to do in the life of somebody, people will gather around you and they will say, Of a truth, your God is the true God. Your God is the living God. Your God is the everlasting God. If that is going to be your testimony, say a better amen. amen. The topic... This morning, we're looking at this, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says something. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise the Lord. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. What does it mean to look? To look simply means to have a steady gaze at something. To gaze at something steadily. Something or someone in a specific direction. To look simply means an intense gaze that is fixed on something or on someone. And so looking unto Jesus could just be said, having a steady gaze towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Perpetually fixing the eyes of our mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. Perpetually fixing the eyes of our minds on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, making Jesus the centerpiece of our lives. That's what it simply means to look unto Jesus. Praise the Lord. And brethren, who or where you look up to will determine how well you end in life. Who you look up to, where you look up to will determine how you end in life. Now, the story we just read is a familiar one. It's a true story, of course. The Lord Jesus Christ himself was the one that constrained his disciples to move into the boat. And then he now directed them to move on the move over to the other side of the lake. And this happened in an evening. And so as they went out, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, what did he do? He went up the mountain and he went up there to pray. Jesus is praying for you. Jesus is praying for me. Hallelujah. 
He's making intercessions for me and even at this time. He knows the challenges and the troubles you're going through. It's not strange to him. He knows. But the truth is that he's praying for you. And because he's praying for me and you, whatever the challenges are, they will never sink your boat. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe it, say better, amen. amen. And so Jesus went up and he was out there praying. But somehow the Bible talks about the fourth watch. The fourth, the fourth watch of the night is from about 3 a.m. in the morning to about 6 a.m. That's before dawn. In other words, they had been there from evening to that point and they would have been struggling in that lake. You could imagine the kind of trouble they would have gone through. The Bible says the wind was very boisterous. They had a terrible storm. For those of us who have been on the sea before, you will understand what they went through. Praise the Lord. You would have an idea of what they went through. It was a hard time for them. But at the appointed time, and the fourth watch of the night, the Lord Jesus Christ himself paid them a visit. He saw what they were going through. He knew what they were going through. And he needed to bring an end to that which they were going through. He paid them a visit. Praise the Lord. I see Jesus paying somebody a visit here this morning. Whatever the challenges are you may have been going through or you are going through, he knows them all. And today he's going to pay you a visit. And that visit is going to bring about a turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. And so when they saw Jesus, it was not yet daylight, just before dawn. When they saw Jesus, when they saw that figure walking on the sea, they exclaimed, fear gripped their hearts. What did they say? They say it's a spirit. A number of times when God is bringing the solutions to your problems, if you do not have discernment, you may not understand that that is actually the solution to your problem. But my prayer is that the Lord will open our eyes. When the solutions to your problems come, you will grab them in the mighty name of Jesus. A number of times you think this is not the way you ought to go. This is not the way you think the solution should come. But unknown to you, that is actually the solution that is coming from God. A solution was coming their way they never knew. Instead of being happy and joyful that the Lord has answered them, they felt, ah, this must be a spirit. Fear gripped their hearts. But the moment Jesus made himself known to them, Peter cried out to him, I also want to walk on this water just like you're doing. What a wonderful experience it would have been. So he asked Peter to come on. And then Peter left the boat and began to walk on the water. Praise the Lord. He began to walk on the water. What a wonderful feeling he must have had walking on the water, walking towards Jesus. And as long as he kept looking on to Jesus, he was walking on the water. But the moment he suddenly realized that, ah, the sea is still very boisterous. The storm is still there. And he looked down and began to see. Fear gripped his heart. Fear is the opposite of fear, of fate. Fear is the opposite of fate. And so fear gripped his heart. The fate he had that, you know, Jesus gave him a word and he acted on that word and began to move towards Jesus, suddenly was dwarfed by the fate that came. And before you knew it, he began to sink. But thank God he cried out to Jesus and Jesus heard his cry and held him by his hand. And not long, they were in the boat safe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, who you look up to in life will actually determine where you end in life. Who is it that you're looking up to? Is it, are you looking up to men to help you in life? Are you looking up to your own self? You know, your, your academic qualification, your looks, you know, or the connections you have. Who is it that you're looking up to? looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our lives. Praise the Lord. Peter looked the wrong direction. He left, he put his, take, took, his eye, took his eyes off Jesus, and then the challenges that confronted him in life began to swallow him up. And brethren, the moment you take your eyes off Jesus and begin to focus them on those challenges that are confronting you in life before you know it, they have a way of swallowing you up. But 
no challenge will swallow you up in the name of Jesus. Because your gaze will be fixed on Jesus. And as long as your gaze is fixed on Jesus, you can be sure he will see you through in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, we'll find the story of a man called Esau in the Bible. A man called Esau in the Bible, where you put your gaze on will depend on how your life will end. Esau was supposed to have, you know, been the one that will inherit the birthright of his parents. Being the firstborn. But somehow he came back from the farm. He was very hungry. And he found out that his younger brother had made some meal. And out of hunger, he asked if the brother could just give him some of that meal. And the brother cunningly asked if he could have his birthright as an exchange. He took his eyes off his maker. He took his eyes off the reality. And he was looking for the little things of life. And before you knew it, he lost his birthright. Many of us are losing our birthrights as Christians because we are looking in the wrong direction. Thank God for people like Joseph. Joseph refused to look in the wrong direction. He had a vision and he knew who gave him that vision. And he looked on to the one that gave him that vision, the almighty God. And so when the enemy came dangling little things, little favors by him, by him, Unto him, he realized that there is no way he can take his eyes off the reality to begin to focus on those mundane things. Praise the Lord. No wonder he finished well and he finished strong. I see you finishing well in life. I see, I see you finishing well in life. In that business, you will finish well. In your academics, you will finish well. In your family life, you will finish well. And that's because your eyes will be fixed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Brother, when you look up, you'll see God, the Father, seated on his throne in heaven. The Bible says the heaven is his throne, the earth is his footstool. So when you keep looking up, you'll always see the God, the Father, that is seated upon the throne. Seated upon the throne, his footsteps on, on earth, and he's in control, total control. And so when you look up, you'll always understand that God is in control of whatever it is that you're going through in life. It is this same God that has said, call unto me in the time of trouble and I'll answer you and show you great things that you do not know. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. He has given us lots and lots of promises. As long as your eyes are fixed on him, it does not matter what the challenges you may be going through you will always receive an answer from him when you cry out to him. Who do you look up to? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. Brethren, when you look up, you'll see the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father, making intercessions for us. He's seated far above principalities and powers. So what are those powers of darkness that will ever be able to bring you down in life when you keep looking unto him, the one that is seated above principalities and powers, the one that has given us lots and lots of promises. He says, cast your cares upon me for I care for you. So when you look up to him, whatever your cares are, whatever your challenges are, whatever your troubles are, he's ever there as you cast those cares upon him to meet you at your point of need. And that's because he cares for you. Praise the Lord. When you look up, you'll see the Lord Jesus Christ, who has also given us this, this, this promise. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He wants to give you rest in those situations, in those circumstances that you're going through in life. If only you keep looking up and looking unto him. Praise the Lord. When you look up, you'll see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our counselor. The Holy Spirit is the one that empowers us in life. Is the source of power. So when you look up to him, you'll be sure that whatever powers you need to be able to overcome whatever challenges that come against you in life, they will always be there, available unto you. Praise the Lord. David no doubt understood this. And he made this profound declaration in the book of Psalms, Psalm 121, 
Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. He says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He understood this. And so his eyes were fixed. I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh my help. He understood that help can only come from the almighty God. And so his eyes were always fixed on the almighty God. From whom help, he is sure, will always come. Praise the Lord. Why must we look up unto him? In Jesus, every need you may ever have is met. It's only in Jesus that whatever needs a man will ever have is met. Praise the Lord. In Jesus, every promise that God has given to you is fulfilled. In him, every promise of God, the Bible says, is yea and amen. Praise the Lord. In him, every blessing you may ever desire in life can be procured. Whatever blessings you desire to have in life, they can only be procured in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And that's because Jesus is the one to whom all powers belong. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. To him all powers belong. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power in, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. If all powers belong to Jesus, what is that power that Satan or demons have or native doctors have to be able to begin to torment you in life? And so when you keep looking unto him, the source of power, because to him all powers belong, you can be sure whatever the challenge is, the Lord Jesus Christ himself will see you through. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in him all things consist. And that's because it's the one that has made all things. In him all things consist. Whatever it is that you may need in life, they consist in him. And so when your eyes are always fixed on Jesus, you can be sure that those needs will always be met. Praise the Lord. Brethren, life is a race. And the only source of strength for this race is the Lord Jesus Christ. Life is a race and the only source of strength for this race is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end of such ways is what? Death. Today we have all kinds of ways in life. And people are going the wrong ways. Some are believing native doctors. Some are joining secret cults. And they tell them all kinds of things. And their eyes are taken off the Lord Jesus Christ. And they focus their eyes on things they ought not to focus on. Some have gone so far and they begin to tell them there's no way you can come out but I have good news for you. The one to whom all powers belong is here this morning. It does not matter how deep you may have gone astray from him, there is power available to deliver you in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe he say a better amen. amen. Brethren, he provides strength and help continually because Jesus is continually making intercessions for us. He's at the right hand of God the Father. That's what the Bible tells us. And what is he doing there? He's making intercessions for us. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we might do what? Obtain mercy and find grace. Grace to do what? To help in time of need. In time of need. Obtain mercy. And then find grace to help in time of need. Brethren, as humans, you will always have a need. After one need has been met, there will certainly be another need to be met. It may not be in your life directly, but certainly you have people around you that will have a need that needed to be met. And those needs can only be met as we receive grace from him. As we obtain mercy from him. As we obtain mercy from him. Praise the Lord. As we receive grace from him. That grace we shall find. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for you to be able to find the mercy. And for you to be able to find the grace. You must be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you take your eyes off him. Just like Peter. The challenges of life swallowed him up. Because mercy was not available to see him through any longer. Grace was no longer available to see him through.
But the mercies of God will never depart from you. I can't hear somebody's amen. I said the mercies of God will never depart from you. The grace of God will always be available unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. And as long as you are focused on him, you will never be able to miss the way. Today we have all kinds of religions. But they do not know the way. Jesus is the way. Is the truth and is the life. Praise the Lord. And as long as you're focused on him, you will never be able to miss it in life. He's the way in that business you want to do, he'll make a way. He's the way in your health, in whatever situations of life, whatever decisions you want to take, Jesus, when you're focused on him, because he's the way, he will always direct you in the perfect and the true way. There are ways that may seem right, but the end may be ways of death. He knows the end even before the beginning. And so when we're focused on him, you can be sure that he'll lead you the right way. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he's the finisher and the author. And so when you have Jesus, when you're focused on him, you can be sure that you'll finish well in life. You'll finish well in that your profession. You'll finish well in that your business. You'll finish well in your career. You'll finish well in your family life. Because Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so when you're focused on him, you can be sure because it's the way to lead you in the right path and empower you to be able to do the right things. You can be sure that you will also finish well. Praise the Lord. The Bible says he's the judge. And when you have him, you're focused on him, it means that you'll never be able to have it wrong. Praise the Lord. You will never be able to go wrong in life. He is the rewarder. The one that adequately rewards any man. And so when you're focused on him, you can be sure that you'll have true rewards in life. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the prince of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. And true peace can only come from Jesus. Today, people in the world are looking for peace. People are doing all kinds of things to have peace. True peace can only come from the Lord Jesus Christ. And a man that does not know Jesus, does not matter how peaceful you think your life is, that is not true peace. True peace can only come through Jesus because Jesus himself is the prince of peace. Praise the Lord. When the Jesus becomes the focus of your existence, every other thing takes its proper place in your life. Today, many people are afraid of how their tomorrow will be. And that's because they do not have Jesus. When you have Jesus, he empowers you. When you have Jesus, you have an assurance that your tomorrow certainly will be all right. When you have Jesus, you know that whatever challenge it is that comes your way, he'll be there to see you through. Praise the Lord. Brethren, looking unto Jesus, it is actually the secret of a victorious Christian life. If a man must live a life of victory, Christian victory, must live a, a, a victorious Christian life, you must be focused on him. You must have a steady gaze. It is not today you're there, tomorrow you're away. It must be something that must be persistent, consistent. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will grant us the grace to be focused on him all the days of our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, in the book of Psalm 34, verse 5, the Bible says something. Psalm 34, verse 5, it says, They looked unto him, and we are lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. No man will ever look unto Jesus and not get enlightened. No man will ever look unto Jesus and not have his needs met in life. No man will ever look unto Jesus and ever be ashamed. No man will ever put his trust and his confidence in Jesus and ever be put to shame. Praise the Lord. Many today have been put to shame despite the promises of the enemy. And that's because they have looked the wrong direction. But when you look up to Jesus, you can be sure you will never know shame in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, when we look up to him, a number of things will happen in our lives. Number one, the salvation of our souls. We look up to him 
for the salvation of our souls. Because it is only in the name of Jesus that we get saved. Praise the Lord. Salvation is only by the name of Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to God the Father except through him. So we look up to him for salvation. It is possible you're here this morning. You have not yet been saved. And that's the reason why possibly Jesus has brought you here. That you may be reconciled back to God the Father. Some people say, why do I need to be saved? Every human being born of a woman needs to be saved. Because we have been cut off from our maker by reason of sin. And Jesus has come that he may reconcile us back unto God. That the benefits and the blessings of being his children will begin to flow again in our lives. This morning, our adventure, you have not been reconciled to God the Father. The Lord Jesus Christ, as you look up to him, will cause you to be reconciled in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 22. He says, look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. When you look up to him, you receive salvation. And brethren, salvation is a total package. When God saves you and delivers you from your sins, he saves you from every other calamity in life. He brings you good health. He brings you promotion. He brings you upliftment in life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We look up to him for power. We look up to him for power. We need the grace of God to be able to succeed in life. And that power comes only through the Lord Jesus Christ, the one to whom all powers belong. Praise the Lord. We look up to him for physical healing because it is in his name that healings come. He says, you shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall do what? They shall recover. So when you look up to him, when you look up to Jesus, you can be sure you receive healings. You look up to him, you can be sure you receive deliverance. Thank God for our Sunday school lesson today, the memory verse in the book of Mark chapter 16 verse 7 it says, and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with what? New tongues. In the name of Jesus. So in his name is deliverance. In his name is deliverance. Brethren, the humanity has been held in captivity. And the only way a man can be delivered is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you focus on him, he brings deliverance your way. A lot of people have been tied down in various areas of their lives unknown to them. In their businesses, in their finances, in their careers. Enemy has spoken all kinds of evil things into their lives that have held them bound. But when you look unto Jesus, you can be sure there will be deliverance. This morning, God is bringing deliverance into the life of somebody. God is setting you free from that bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, when you look up to him, he gives you grace to overcome weariness and the heavy burdens that you carry in life. The heavy burdens that we carry. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall do what? Give you rest. Now finally, what does it really mean to look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus also implies that you must look away from every other thing apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. You must look away from every other thing. Every other thing is temporal. Every other thing is seen. Jesus, you do not see with your naked eyes. Praise the Lord. Just like Joseph. He was seeing something that others were not seeing. He was seeing something those in Potiphar's house were not seeing. And so when Potiphar's wife asked him, she dangled something he was seeing. Something that looked nice. But in comparison to what men were not seeing, that which he saw was so small. And because he was able to focus on Jesus, he knew that he cannot toy with this little thing to take the place of the great blessing that lay ahead of him. And so, Looking unto Jesus implies that you must look away from every other thing. Praise the Lord. And looking away from every other thing includes looking away from man. 
Look at the way from your own self. Your achievements, even your failures of the past, put them aside. Your weaknesses put aside. Just keep looking unto him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look away from the world and all of its system. Look away from the difficulties, the challenges of life, and focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Focus on what he has said in his word. His word is himself. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So when you focus on the word of God, you are actually focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ. What has God said concerning you and your situations? Not what you're going through. What you're going through may be contrary to what God has said, but keep focusing on what God has said. Keep trusting and believing God to bring to pass whatever promise it is that he has said concerning you. Praise the Lord. You must look away from the difficulties and the obstacles. You must look away from everything that is ungodly. Today, many have joined secret calls. And they call them all kinds of names. And they have strayed away. They have looked the wrong direction. My prayer is that if you belong to such today, even as you look unto Jesus, the Lord will set you free. I said the Lord will set you free in the mighty name of Jesus. Looking unto Jesus implies studying the life of Jesus and patterning our lives according to his life. We must study the life of Jesus and then begin to pattern your life after the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it means to look unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus means looking to his word, studying his word and making up your mind to live in obedience to his word, in holiness, living a life that is undefiled, a life that is perfect in thought, in words, and in deed, a life that is opposed to everything that is evil, Praise the Lord. A life that is free of hypocrisy. A life that is free of hypocrisy. A life that is full of compassion. A life of wisdom. A life of patience. A life of temperance. A life of generosity. A life that is not selfish. That is what it means to look unto Jesus. Patterning, pat, patterning our own lives according to the life of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Praise the Lord. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. When we look unto him, we can be sure that whatever the challenges are that we are going through, because challenges of the truth must come our way. The Lord Jesus Christ was the one, the very one that constrained them. Constrained means almost forcing. One that constrained them into the boat. But while they were on that journey, they had a challenge. And that tells me and you that, that you're a Christian does not exempt you from the challenges of life. But as long as you have Jesus and your eyes are fixed on him, you can be sure that those challenges will never ever be able to swallow you. I want us to bow our hearts as we talk to the almighty God. It is possible that our eyes have strayed on and off, on and off. This morning we want to tell the Lord Jesus Christ to help us. Help us to be focused on him. And the Lord will help us to be focused on him. Sometimes the challenges and the troubles of life have made us to take our eyes off him for a moment. We gaze at him, we take it out. But the Lord will help us that our gaze on him will be a permanent one, a consistent one, a continuous one. Let's talk to the almighty God. Talk to him. No challenge is ever permitted to drown a child of God, to swallow up a child of God. It's only when we take our eyes off him, only when we lose faith in him, just like Peter did, he lost faith. And those same challenges began to swallow him. That boisterous wind, that storm began to swallow him up. No financial challenge is supposed to swallow you up. No marital challenge is supposed to swallow you up. It does not matter what the challenge is. Maybe in the academics, whatever it is, it's not supposed to swallow you up. 
Let's ask that the Lord will help us to be focused on him. Talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's here to help you. We need help that our eyes will continually be focused on him. Whatever it is that is taking my eyes off you, my father, please take it out of my life. Salvation is only in the Lord Jesus Christ as you look up to him. So you're here this morning. You know it. You're still enjoying the pleasures of sin. You have not repented of your sins. You know it. Jesus is here to help you. Jesus is here to set you free. It's only when you've been set free that you can now actually have the power to be able to properly focus on him. It's only when you have been set free that you can be empowered to be able to focus on him and begin to receive the blessings of eyes that are upon him. And so you're here this morning. You want Jesus to set you free from your sins. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands. We're going to pray together. Just lift up your hands. God bless you as you do that. God bless you. God bless you. Just lift up your hands unto him. You're not lifting those hands up unto any man. You're lifting them up unto the almighty God. Just lift them up. Just lift them up. God bless you as you do that. God bless you. Please don't bring down your hands until the ushers have issued you a card. May we all please rise on our feet. If you're asking Jesus to save you this morning, wherever you are, just please come towards the altar as we conclude our prayers. Just come towards the altar. May we all please lift up our hands. If the Lord Jesus Christ is asking you, my son, my daughter, the time has come for you to surrender your life to me. Wherever you are, just come towards the altar. The rest of us, let's lift up our hands unto the Almighty God as we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you. Father, we have heard your word this morning. No man will fix his eyes on you and ever remain the same. A man that fixes his eyes on you is a man that will walk in faith and not in fear. We ask, O oh Lord Jehovah, that every one member of this congregation whose hands are lifted up unto you this morning, cause, Lord, to continually fix their eyes on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that will cause any man here to take his eyes of Jesus, Father, root them out in the name of Jesus. Even as we look up to you, whatever the challenges are, any man, any woman, any boy, any girl is going through in this congregation. Father, this morning, terminate them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Even as you cause us to walk a victorious Christian life, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God shall say it better. Somebody shout it loud, hallelujah. I believe you've been richly blessed. You can join us at RCCG House of Grace, Rivers Province 5, 55 Woji Estate Road, Woji, Port Harcourt. Or send us an email at info at rccghouseofgraceph.org. Or visit our website, rccghouseofgraceph.org. You can watch us live on YouTube, House of Grace TV. Thank you. And God bless.